Well, hello there everyone and welcome to another video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. Today we're going to talk about yet another sound card because this is the Teratech Orion 7.1 PCIe sound card. It is a 55 euro sound card and it boasts that it has crystal clear HD sound, um, sorry, sound experience for the ambitious gamer. So how good is it? Let's find out in this video. So, this card provides crystal clear HD sound for the ambitious gamer. Well, I tend to think I'm an ambitious gamer, but okay, at least I'm a gamer. I'm not really that ambitious. I really am I'm not really that good, but still I'm, an, I'm a gamer. So I want to have crystal clear sound. So I wanted to find out if this is really true. But before we go over to the specifications, I wanted to share with you that the moustache is gone, as you can see. And I've also gone to the barber to, to get myself a more or a better haircut and to be, look a bit more decent on this video. Well, how about those specifications? Let a head, let's head over there. So this is the Teratech Orion 7.1 sound card and I found it at a local supplier for 55 euros, which is kind of cheap for a dedicated internal sound card. It uses the PCI Express interface and you can connect up to seven speakers and one subwoofer to it. The card itself is rather tiny if compared to other cards, but I'll get back to that a bit later. It has a nice metal shroud to keep out the electromagnetic interference, but I wonder if that does anything because it doesn't circumvent the complete card. There is an add-on card also available, which is nice to see and you can use it to plug in any Sony to Philips interface in or out or a coaxial in or out. To connect the cards, there is a regular flat cable with a decent length, so the cards do not have to be on top of each other to be connected. The add-on card also doesn't require a PCI Express slot, only the main card itself. The box also provides two extra brackets, so you can fit this in a small form factor case, which is a nice feature to see. And this also explains why the card is rather tiny. Now I also found out something interesting about this card because when I was doing my research on this card I found that Teratech actually doesn't make this card at all. There are a lot of suppliers of this card but they don't create the card. So there are a lot of cards that are sort of or almost identical. Over here you can see a diamond card which isn't for sale anymore but which is identical. And here you can see the Setna. SE PCI ESC 10 PCI Express 7.1 sa channel sound card. Ridiculous name. But it is nearly identical as well, except that this one doesn't have the shroud. So what's inside the card? Well, again, there is a C media processor used, and this time it's the CM8828, which isn't a bad chip. Chips from the same series are also used in the ASUS Xonar Essence ST and the ASUS Xonar DX. There, the chip that was used was the SCM8788. In these products, ASUS put on the label AV100 to make it look like they made the chips themselves, but that was not the case. It was just a C media processor. The ASUS Xonas Phoebus Solo also uses a C media chipset from that same series, and this time it's the C media or CM8888 DHT, and DHT means Dolby Home Theater. That was a really good sound card of which I made a video about earlier. But back to the Teratech card. This time it's the 8828, um, which is a bottom line chip from that CM8000 series. To crank up the looks and make it look like it's a bit more decent chip, they put on the, uh, sorry, the Oxygen Express label. But that doesn't mean it's a better sound chip. The codec that was used is a CM9882A. Now, the difference between a codec and a digital to analog converter is that a codec can you do both ADC and DAC with one chip. 
this is more often the cheaper option for card creators to make and also if this is this is also the thing that is mostly used in motherboards so what does the driver interface look like now this is what the volume control looks like or the teratec audio center now this is the oldest setting screen i've seen in a lot of years and I really don't understand why they, well, haven't pimped this up a bit and why they haven't re removed some of the stuff. For instance, if you go over to here, why is there still a surround max? Why do you want to add a lot of, well, reverb to uh, music, movies or other sounds? There's absolutely no use for it. The only thing that may be interesting is the smart volume because well that way you won't damage your ears when you listen to music that's too loud the other things like the flex bass the sing effects all the other things i've tried them and they just add a lot of reverb and it's so very annoying there's one thing that you should pay attention to when you how you well you buy this card and let's head over to the sample rate and always had well set it to the highest settings because if you don't it will be always set to the lowest settings and it did throw me throw me off a, a bit because when I started to listen to the sound card, uh, the sound quality was extremely bad. And when I say extremely bad, I mean extremely bad because it was set to 44.1 gigahertz, uh, kilohertz, sorry, not gigahertz, kilohertz. And the settings were set, set at 16 bits. So, and I switch it to this, the settings uh, are at the highest. Now, while I was looking at the Teratec Audio Center, uh, something kind of familiar came to mind. And I thought to myself, well, why is it so similar to something I've already seen? And then I thought about the Teufel Audio Center. Also an audio center, which is down here. And it, well, it in the end, they are, well, both have the same media chip in there. So they look kind of the same, but this one, of course, has more settings than the Teufel headset, because that one has an integrated headset. It's not an internal car, but for the rest, it's almost identical, except for maybe the, well, the layout and just the way how it looks. So the driver interface is interesting, the what's inside is interesting, but it all boils down to what does this sound card sound like? Is it really any good and is it worth your 55 euros? Well, uh, again, I've listened to this sound card for about two weeks, three weeks now. And well, I must say the quality is kind of okay. It's what you expect for 55 euros. It's not an EVGA NU, it's not a Chris, uh, creative AE5. It's a decent sound card. And what's cool about this card, of course, it's 7.1. What's also cool about this card is that it has the breakout card, just to have a breakout card or an add-on card. It's not a really bad sound card. Uh, the sound quality itself, uh, it's very high. And at the beginning when I was uh, listening to this, or starting to listen to this sound card, I thought, well, this is a, must be the worst sound card I have ever heard. But just, that was just me having the wrong settings. It was at 8 bit, uh, sorry, 16 bits and at the lowest uh, uh, sample rating. But so I cranked that up and the sound quality was, well, was kind of good. It was really high in the highs. It was a bit high in the mediums. The lows were a bit gone. And again, this sound card does struggle to provide your headset with enough oomph to get it, you know, to hear the nice sounds, to hear it uh, constantly uh, over every frequency but it's not a really bad sound card. It's just not as good as um, I hoped it would be. The driver interface, as I said in the uh, before, in the other video that I made earlier, uh, the driver interface uh, is ancient. I really do not know why they still create these, but as you saw, it also is the same one as comes with the Teufel headset. Um, so it's sort of a standard with some branding over it and that's it. So it's not even a Teratech card, it's a standard created sound card that is distributed among various uh, uh, suppliers and that's it. But 
The final verdict, should you get one? Well, if you're looking for a nice sound card, a dedicated sound card, which provides kind of nice sound, both 7.1 and is PCI Express, this is a nice sound card to have. It's not bad. Are there better cards? Yes, there are. Um, of course, as always, the Asus Xonar AE, which is, in my opinion, the best budget sound card out there. You should definitely get that one if you definitely need 7.1 or fancy a uh, card which has an SP diff in and out or a coaxial in and out. That this card, this card is the one for you. But otherwise, leave it and get yourself an Asus Xoner AE. That's it for me for today. Um, I hope to see you soon in the next video. Stay tuned and see you then. Bye bye.